Excellent. So let's get started. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today, for, especially on a Saturday evening, for the CEO story hosted by the PGP Max office at ISP. My name is Thomas, and I'll be your host today. The CEO story is our outreach initiative that brings together alumni of the PGP Max program. So therefore, this is your opportunity to ask them about the program experience, their post-program impact in their careers, how the PGP Max has helped them professionally and personally, or anything that you might have as a query on the program. To do this, please make use of the Q&A box, which is available towards the bottom of your screen. Uh, you will have an option to list in your questions there, and I'll be happy to share these questions with our panelists as we progress. Uh, please do note that we limit today's Q&A to the panel and to uh, our panel members. Uh, any program or admission-related queries will have to be taken offline. In some time, as we progress, I'll share a separate link in the chat box for this. There is a one-to-one -one booking link. Feel free to book a conversation with our admission office if there is any specific program or admission related query. So that said, without much delay, let me welcome our panelists for the event today. I have with me Anand Jeraman. Anand is the director with PwC and handles automotive strategy consulting for the firm. He has several uh, years of experience with the auto industry before moving to the consulting side and is an alumnus of the PGP Max class of 20. Welcome, Anand. Thank also you. joining us is Jignesh Des Desai. Jignesh is the head of Legion business for Google and is an alumnus from the PGP Max class of 14. He has had a career in consulting and advisory before moving to Google as a business head. Welcome, Jignesh. Hi, everyone. And I have Samir Samdani in the panel today. Samir is the CEO and whole time director of Hyundai India Insurance Broking. Samir has led multiple vertical leadership roles in insurance broking and in the auto industry before assuming his CEO role and as an alumnus of the PGP Max class of 21. Welcome, Samir. Thanks, Thomas, for having me here. A pleasure. So given the diverse group of individuals we have in the panel, I'm sure you would want to know more about their profiles and their professional journey. Uh, so let's first do that. I will go, I'll move across the panel. Uh, Anand, I'll start with you. If you could give us a glimpse into your uh, professional journey uh, by explaining what is your background and what brought you to BGP Max that will help us set the context. Thanks, uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So um, I'll try and keep this brief. Um, I graduated in 1995 from an engineering college. I was a mechanical engineer. Early on in my career, I was very switched on in the technical aspects of what we do. Industry. Uh, I did various roles around manufacturing, industrial engineering, procurement, products, uh, it's, which was very pleasing, which gave me a lot of uh, you know, memorable uh, experience and uh, opportunities. In the second half of my career, um, probably, uh, given, I mean, I've got 25 years, so I'd say probably around 2009, 2010. Um, I started leaning more towards uh, strategic projects that were championed by CEOs and CXOs and um, you know, company. And I was always feeling the lack of depth in certain uh, business decision making. I was not able to relate to some of the decisions made by um, the uh, seniors in my company uh, completely. Although I did a lot of um, self reading. I, uh, if, you know, even when the uh, internet learning was in its very native formative years, I used to follow a lot of professors and whatever was available and spent uh, countless hours trying to uh, build my repertoire of knowledge, but, um, you know, it wasn't fulfilling. And as I was getting more and more deep into these roles by around 2018, 2019, I felt that I couldn't afford not to do an MBA if that was what my career was. And you know, the late more I delayed the decision, the uh, more difficult and challenging it's going to be because as you grow uh, more experienced and senior in your organization, time uh, is very precious. You don't get a lot of days off from the organization, etc. So I took the plunge. I'm very happy with the decision to do my MBA at ISB. Um, one of my aspirations prior to doing um, my MBA program was to get into the consulting industry because uh, you know it's it's a very business profile. Um, it helps CEOs 
with their problems. So uh, if the CEO of a company is not able to solve their problem, they call you and you go fancy and uh, nice to do. So um, having done my MBA program, it was very, um, you know, it was very helpful to work my way into the consulting industry. Um, you know, in addition to all the experience I had, um, you know, consulting business uh, hires only professionals with uh, MBA, especially when you get into strategy consulting. So that plus uh, my depth of experience combined, I charted a path, I did a bit of networking, and then I was able to find my way to consulting, um, which I'm very glad I did. Um, and I must say, I'm very thankful for having made the decision. Um, it's helped me immensely. Um, I'm, I'm now able to relate to a lot of things that goes around in the industry space, in the business space, Reading the newspapers is a little bit more informative where you're able to see the depth and uh, why certain things are a certain way and uh, you know, even as irrational as it might be for a peripheral reader, it, it has helped me immensely um, uh, and was one of my best decisions, I would say. So that's me. Here I am, 25, 27 years into my career. Um, I mean, if I had one thing to rewind and do, I'd probably have done my MBA. Um, much earlier. Um, I don't know if I subscribe to this PGP kind of a program and I'm not saying it's bad. Um, I always felt that having a bit of experience under your belt and doing an executive MBA has its own merits because the learning process is much more richer. You, you have a cohort of uh, experienced people, um, you understand the industries and you have some basic knowledge. So I I'm of the school of thought that a PGP executive program has certain benefits compared to the PGP program. Um, but that said, uh, you know, some people want to get their MBAs earlier on and, uh, you know, start their career in the management field. I mean, each one has his own decision making and choice and neither is one is right or wrong. It's just how different individuals want to chart the career path. But for those aspirants here who haven't done an MBA, I would uh, strongly encourage you to do it if you can find yourself, if you can have a plan to apply uh, the learnings and you can uh, you know, convert it um, into something meaningful. It is definitely a good addition to your uh, experience and your resume. Doing it from a reputable institution, learning from the best prof professors is also very important. And that's where I think ISB stands out. Um, that was one of our decision making criteria to get into ISB. So that's a little bit about me, why I did my ISB PGP Max and uh, you know, um, where I am in the industry today. I'm happy to take some questions later on, but I'll pass the bait on to I think Samir who might go next and then now Jake Nation, then we'll go on from there. Thank you, Anand. Samir, I'll continue with you. Yeah, thanks, Anand. Uh, I think you've covered most of it, but uh, yeah, so I have been an insurance professional. Um, I, I completed my graduation in 2005. It's been about 18 years in the industry. Uh, I worked in insurance companies, worked in auto companies like Toyota, and somewhere I felt that there is a need uh, to do my MBA. I was not an MBA before this. And uh, I took the plunge with PGP Max because it gave me a good mix uh, while working, uh, go back to campus, uh, learn certain uh, aspects of uh, you know the studies and go back and uh, implement those at your workplace. So it was a pretty interesting journey of uh, 18 months at uh, PGP Max. Learned a lot from peers, learned a lot from the professors. Uh, I was able to go back and uh, implement a certain uh, ideas at my organization, which gave growth to the organization, to myself as well. And uh, during the course, uh, when I was with uh, Toyota, there was uh, a good opportunity with uh, Hyundai. So Hyundai wanted to get into the insurance space. And I had the experience of uh, managing a auto insurance program. I had the exposure of running the business. But what was missing probably from my side, I feel, is uh, an MBA from a B school, which uh, stands out. And uh, I, I think it's important for organizations like Toyota, Hyundai, large organizations to also kind of have their top man from uh, the premium institutes like I, ISB, IIMs, etc. So uh, I think ISB also probably helped me uh, get this uh, role. And uh, I got into uh, Hyundai in uh, 2021 and uh, set up the entire organization for them. And uh, today, I think we are uh, one of the largest um, insurance brokers. Within less than one year, we are in the top five. Uh, we do about 3,000 crores of business, so all good. And uh, had a good uh, time with uh, ISB. So for all aspirants, I think uh, if you're looking for taking the plunge, I think it's, it's, it's a great course. Uh, it gives you 
uh, you know, the best of the professors who come and teach you. It gives you insights on a lot of aspects, not only finance, marketing, HR, from, from uh, mergers, acquisitions, valuations, a lot of things that uh, you get to learn. And of course, the network. Uh, you have a brilliant network. You have uh, at least in our batch, we had more than 20 CEOs. Uh, I kind of reach out to them whenever I need anything on finance, on HR. It's pretty easy to uh, reach out to any of the uh, cohort members and uh, everyone's been very helpful. So that's that's my story and I probably will take some questions later on. Excellent. Thank you, Samir. Thank you for sharing that. Jignesh, let's continue with yours. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Anand. Samir definitely brings back uh, you know memories of why I chose the course and you know where I am today. Uh, as you all know, uh, I'm technically challenged because you can't see my camera and I got it. Open. So it's a bit of a dichotomy there. Uh, but to be fairly honest, I use Google Meets every day, so I, I don't use quite a bit. Uh, but talking about uh, my journey, so I've been eight years in Google now. Uh, I lead a team which helps our clients maximize their return on Google investment. Uh, I'll not get into the technical jargon of it. And this is what I've been doing for uh, the last eight years. Uh, across various geographies, across uh, various type of sizes of clients, etc. So anybody who uh, understands digital marketing has spent on YouTube, on Google search, on display networks, etc. My team kind of uh, helps them make the most of their uh, investment, and then of course uh, double A to triple A. So I have been uh, a twenty year, I have a twenty year career. Uh, Unlike Anand, I started in consulting, so I was lucky enough to kind of get breaks in consulting and uh, did that for about 11 years, uh, was a generalist, was a specialist, went into this consulting, did, did everything possible. Uh, I was very close to kind of doing a, a PE stint uh, at KPMG. Uh, but then I realized that, you know, I was doing the same uh, and that's when I had to take a decision as to how do I further my career uh, goals. And it was not just lateral movement or vertical movement because that is... Uh, plenty in, in consulting firms and you know you can always go up but somewhere I, I started realizing that you know I, my my repertoire is not my skills my repertoire is not very broad if I talk to somebody for 30 minutes they'll know that there's consulting but just came to the surface so uh, that was the idea and I didn't have technical background like Anand has because you know if you're technically sound and you go to consulting it's a different thing if you're a career consultant you know after a point you kind of you know have jargon speak which which I wanted to kind of avoid uh, so that's when uh, I had two options. Do I kind of, you know, uh, change my my career, move into industry or kind of upscale, uplevel myself? It was a thought process for a year almost. Uh, and this was the time in 2011, 2012 when, you know, Facebook was growing, Google was growing. I had no idea why they were growing. Uh, Satyam has ha had happened and I thought Google is another Satyam waiting to happen. So those were my novice kind of knowledge about uh, this whole industry and Amazon, Flipkart, India was shopping on, on these things. So I realized and, and every time I go to a, a client to consult with, they were always looking at digital assets. You know, they were like, okay, I want to get online. Now those kind of thoughts triggered and and uh, uh, I'm like, well, how should I go, go to some of these uh, patients or professions? And I had no idea that a company like Google hired non-tech. Uh, it thanks to uh, ISB and I joined this class and I met an old friend of mine who was in Facebook at that time and getting to know him and opened my horizons up to say, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh, went, ahead, went ahead and applied and, uh, you know, I was at, uh, you know, I will talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, why I value ISB so much. The fact that I'm, I'm here, we three are here, just tells you how we value, how much we value this course. Uh, it was the network, it was the professors, it was the time I spent there balancing family, life, work commitments, uh, you know, it's only when you push your boundaries, you realize that how much more can you do and adapt. Of course, uh, you know, there are financial commitments. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, that, that come into the play. Uh, but I, I would say the top three things that I really benefited were definitely my, my, my class, the network, not only my class, but, you know, the alumni and new students coming later on, you know, there, there's a big network that is there. Uh, of course, the professors and, you know, they, I always thought that I come from consulting, you know, I know a lot, but I was so mistaken. I only knew one path of kind of, uh, you know, uh, succeeding in life. And when I met so many people, I realized there are so many multiple ways of succeeding. So uh, definitely in one line, if I say it opened my thought process, it opened the way I think and the way I approach uh, situations. That's it. Thanks a lot, Jignesh. Uh, in fact, once we had uh, started promoting this event, a lot of questions that we received from our participants were all around your transition 
uh, uh, all three panel members have had some transition in terms of what you did before and what you're doing today. Uh, so Samir, let me come to you on that. I'll, I'll want to talk about your transition first. So in, in many ways, you were chasing an ambition, an ambition of becoming a CEO before you turned 40 and you were able to do it a couple of years ahead of what timeline you had set. Um, of course, you were a senior VP with Toyota, so you probably already had this visibility uh, and PHP Max was maybe an enabler. Uh, so what, what has the journey been like? What were those two years like? Uh, has it been an immediate takeaway that you could relate to from PGP Max to that transition of the journey? Could you please share some insights there? Uh, thanks, Thomas. So I think, yes, uh, it's been a very interesting journey. Of course, when I was with Toyota, uh, like you rightly said, I had a dream of becoming a CEO at less than 40. And uh, this actually started way back uh, in 2005 when I joined Reliance and uh, I realized that insurance industry is doing well and I can uh, go up the ladder if I'm able to uh, work hard. I worked up, reached up, but then again, you realize that, you know, as a CEO, you have very limited roles. Uh, you know, every, every insurance, uh, every, every company just have one uh, position and it's not easy to go there. And uh, during the pandemic, I took this decision because I thought that I need to upskill. I need to have a big brand behind my name because I was not an MBA and uh, I applied in uh, ISP. Of course, at that point of time, I was also evaluating IM. I was also evaluating in CR, but I felt that ISB has a stronger brand in India. Of course, the alumni, something that I really relish is um, at that point of time, I reached out to a couple of alums and I remember the warmth that they had when I called and said, I want to, you know, get into ISB and they really spend that time to explain what ISB is, what it can do to your life, what, how it can change, et cetera. So that I, I really liked the way uh, the alums actually uh, spoke with that warmth, et cetera. And then, of course, yes, uh, I applied, I got in. Uh, fortunately, I was able to join the course. And then I realized that uh, there are a lot of aspects in life where, you know, you, you, you think that you know a lot of things, but then when you go there, you realize that there are other cohort members who are much better than you in terms of finance because they're from finance backgrounds. You know, people from like Jignesh, you know, coming from uh, tech backgrounds. Uh, you have Anand coming from consulting backgrounds. And then you start realizing that the perspectives are so different and the learnings are so great that today, uh, when I uh, started this organization, I was the first employee to start this organization. It all helped. It all helped. You know, uh, I, I used to take help from a few of the alums on HR policies, on uh, finance policies, etc. And it, it was a great journey. And I really thank uh, ISB for giving me this opportunity to learn so much there. Uh, life as ISB also has been great. It's not only about, uh, you know, going there and studying, but it's all about networking. It's all about, uh, you know, knowing each other and uh, making actually friendship for life. Excellent, Samir. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Anand, I'll come to you next again. As you mentioned at the start, you had this plan to move to the consulting side when you started the program and you you did that right now. So you are in the management strategy or strategy consulting side of uh, uh, with PwC. Now, that is also an aspirational journey for a lot of uh, prospective applicants who's, who reach out to us. They, in fact, quite often ask us, is this possible for a vertical leader with so many years of experience into one function, one vertical, to move into the consulting site? If so, what are the options and how do I get to do that? It's something that quite a lot of our participants or aspirants ask. Uh, and please shed some light on that. How were you able to do that? And uh, what is the help that you got from the program or, or from the network in general? So, I mean, I just take a very uh, simple analogy to answer this, right? I mean, you want to go from uh, Bangalore to Delhi, south to north, uh, heading up to You could either drive all along the Konkan coast, stop in Pune, then go through Rajasthan, do Jaipur, and then get to Delhi. Um, that's one path you could do. Or you can drive east, go to Chennai, go all the way up to uh, Vaisak along the east coast, enjoy the beauty of India, cut through Bihar, UP, get to Delhi, or go through Nagpur, go through the forest. So there is never a singular track from A to B. And I think all career aspirants, and it's good to have an aspiration. Anybody without an aspiration, I think, um, will eventually burn out your talent and uh, what you know, you're capable of delivering and value you're delivering to the society. 
But uh, everybody needs to sit back every two to five years um, and say, here I am, what is it that I have to do in the next three years to achieve what I want to do? And I think it's, it's just my personal philosophy that, um, you know, having an end goal for where you want to finish in your career is nice. But if you don't have this broken down plan saying, what's my next step? What's my next step? What's my next step? you will not be able to get to that plan. It's just too too far away and you just don't know what to do, right? And, uh, and again, I'll break the journey. When you're driving, you're saying, when is my next city? It's 70 kilometers. And you just go through milestone by milestone, right? I mean, it's something that naturally and intuitively comes to many of us when we go on road trips, etc. So life and professional life and personal life are very similar in that aspect. So you've got to do that. The second thing is, um, like you're going on a journey, if you're going on the East Coast, you have to pack your beach wear. And uh, if you're going through the forest, you want to pack a lot of mosquito repellents and all that, right? You've got to prepare. So knowing your journey, you need to know what is it that you have to pick up? What is it that you have to stock up? And that's exactly what you need to do as a career plan. Right? So is a transition possible? I mean... I know of a thousand people before me, I believed that it was going to be possible. I charted my plan and I executed the plan. So it is upon each one of you to sit down where you are and say, how do I get there? Go talk to five or six people or 10 people who from different industry backgrounds got into consulting or from a technical background got into finance or you know who became a CEO of their own industry. Every you know, there are some parallels. You will not get a perfect fit, but you find the closest person and ask him what you do. And I think one common theme is they will knock down milestones and um, skills and, you know, things that they had to accomplish in their path. To success. And I think that is what is very important for those aspirants who want to industry change, let alone consulting, any industry change, any, any um, you know, um, vocation change will require this. Now, is MBA everything? I would say MBA is very essential, but it's not everything. It will give you a valid, powerful attraction. Um, a lot of people come to B school as well, thinking that the day they graduate, the moment they have their PGP Max uh, certificate degree on the left hand, somebody will give them an offer on the right hand. No, it doesn't happen. That way. You're going to have to apply that experience and show them why you're worth the job. And that is not a whether you're doing an MBA or whether you're doing any program, this is the essence. Hiring happens because you've got the qualifications, you've got the experience, you've shown enough aptitude to apply what you've learned and your past experience into creating something. And then, therefore, you become someone attractive for a hirer or something like that. Unless he's trying to poach and doesn't want to train, there are certain things, but forget all that. That's essentially, you need to understand that this is the concept of hiring, right? So, is MBA the one and only thing? The answer is no. Is MBA essential? Um, I'm not going to sit down and answer the question. I may be wrong. There are people who have accomplished great things without an MBA, but if you look at a majority of people who've done their MBA, they've all been successful. So if you look at the size of people who've done their MBA and look at the correlation of whether it helped them transform their careers, I would say you will find a higher correlation than the people who've not done their MBA. So it supports the theory that MBA adds value, right? And it's a bond you individually to tailor a plan to say, how am I going to apply my learning? And I will also say this, right? I mean, any and every MBA, there's, there's thousands of MBA degrees available in a country as vast as India with a lot of institutions providing that. You need to figure out what is your target. Um, are you looking for knowledge because you want to invest in stocks and average MBA or even a chartered accounting might do? But are you looking to get into the Ivy League of uh, firms like Facebook, Amazon, Google, into business roles, McKinsey, BCG, PwC, um, you know, the big four firms, and, uh, or you want to get into Reliance, or the big names of the industry? Then obviously a reputation such as ISP is very, very helpful. So you want to have to make a choice and there is no standard answer to, to that question. Um, everybody is for himself. You've got to stand, reflect, and make the journey. Is ISB the best answer for everybody on the call? I don't know. It may be, it may not be. You're going to have to evaluate, ask yourself the critical questions and make a choice. But all I can tell you is, is ISB a great organization? It is, of course, a great organization. It will provide you with that kind of networking. It will kind of give you the best professors. It will give you the campus environment. 
it will transform your life and that's what great p schools do that ordinary p schools can't and uh, you know isb has its own competition i have a huge amount of respect for the iim asb and cs are they good organization equally they have their own strengths and merits their program has its own strengths and merits isb has its own strengths and merits so you're going to have to evaluate all we can tell you here being past alums of this program is it's a great program um and it is transformational and you know we made the choice to do it at isb for reasons specific to our you know how it fitted our professional life the time we could take out um, to do the program and etc and all these matter in making your decision choices and um, that that's my answer to the question so i think each one of you have to just look at your uh, atd plan um, you know bangalore to delhi thanks and that helps a lot in fact a lot of our participants today are prospective applicants who are actually in the application process who are working on their application and this is going to uh, really lay out a, a you know set the expectation right for our participants and applicants um jignesh coming to you uh, again another transformation from you know moving from the advisory side of big four to the technology side which we just spoke of but on another note you did the program back in 2013 14 Yeah. Uh, today, when somebody reaches out to us and says, "Look, uh, I am a technology leader. I want to move to a consulting or the other way around," we it's easy to pull out a lot of examples. Pulling out a lot of common parallels from across uh, our alum database is easy. Yeah. And today, there is also a lot of backing, which is there. Uh, you know, for the last four years, TGP Max has been consistently ranking in the global uh, rankings. We are one of the top fifty programs in the world. all that is there but you did the program when probably this was not there uh, we only had about three batches out uh, you we we had limited uh, data to point back and say okay this is a possible transformation that you could expect from the program so while you did that uh, while you did the program back then did you have an objective in mind and uh, is, is that ob- objective uh, related to the transformation that you had shed some light on that please Not Tom. So I think uh, before I get into the answer, I'll tell you to when I just uh, remember when I start when I started applying or started even deciding what should I do. Like I had this one thing in mind that you know I am confident about investing in myself because let's say whatever the course fee is, you know you invest in real estate and if money is your objective or or equity money to get. But I said okay, I want to invest in myself and I think that's the biggest return on investment that I can get. So with that objective in mind, I said okay. i know certain things coming from advisory these are two three options i want and i think this course will help me further that objective right uh when i actually came in uh, and of course i spoke to a lot of people you know as there were few colleges uh, giving those courses i even thought at one point in time my wife was working so i thought at one point in time should i do a full time course or you know those residential exec courses where uh, you know i give up on my work but i didn't want to because i didn't want that break in my career So I said, okay, let me go in with an open mind. It gives me the best of all the worlds I have in mind. Uh, I had spoken to a few people who were uh, so I had spoken to a lot of people who had done the earlier three years, and I understood from them what I what I took away from them is how it helped them open up their horizon, open up their uh, thought processes. Uh, because every time I spoke to them, uh, I even met a few of them. I spoke to them. They said, okay, you know, you are only thinking about this one way or two ways or three ways of doing something, but there are countless, and this course is going to help you figure that out. both academically and when you meet and talk to people i think i took that as the thing and said okay let me go in uh, let me take this uh, plunge and believe in my abilities the brand name is there to back me uh, but let me see what i get out of it. trust me the result the reason i was in google right after so i finished my course in october 2014 if i'm not wrong uh, i started my interview process in november and i was in google on in early 2015 uh, maybe i think may or june so I credited to opening my horizons up, and I had never thought that I, Google is what I land with. But when I spoke to people, there were so many industries. You know, my colleagues were in different industries. There were IT professionals. There were from the financial services industry. There were people who ran ran their own businesses, and you know, they wanted to kind of get us on board because they want to further their businesses. So there were so many options open there. At one point in time, a few of us actually get to got together and even thought of starting something on our own. So. so many options over those 18 months you discover and then the next class comes in and you change your mind and the next class comes in and change your mind so it, it is such a big uh, journey of learning and unlearning and i think that's when eventually i decided that you know i wanted to go for an industry that has the next 10 years runway it is slightly nascent it's growing and i can grow along with it what this course helped me is build my narrative 
as I, I heard Adan say, and I heard even uh, Sameer say that, uh, you know, you can't get all the skills that that a role requires, right? But you have those skills. Sometimes you're not very really, uh, certain about them. So when I spoke to my uh, fellow peers, you know, when I spoke to professors who are very open and, and helpful, I realized that there is a there is a certain skill set that I have. There are certain strengths that I have. And this is my narrative. When I went to Google and I interviewed, uh, and now I'm very I'm good friends with all those people who interviewed me. They realized that we knew you had zero deal marketing experience. But it was the leadership, the skills that you bought because of which uh, we hired you. And that was possible only because of the course and the 18 months that I kind of uh, worked uh, with my peers and professors. So that was uh, where I kind of benefited from it. Excellent. Thank, thank you so much, Yvnish, for sh sharing that. I'll stay with you uh, for the next question. So we've got a lot of questions on what really happens in PGP Max, what is experience like? So let me kind of zoom into the program a little. Now, you did the program back in 2014. Uh, it's been a few years after doing the program now. Uh, we talk a lot about the network. Is this network really helpful? Is the Alum network that well connected? What has your experience been? Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you the benefit of the network. If I have to put three things, uh, you know, in, in that order, I would say probably the brand name of the network comes to talk to you, uh, you know. And as you mentioned, you know, I, I, I'm always glad when I see those rankings and I'm like, you know, oh, you know this is the course I had done and this ranks ranked at the top. Uh, but the network, you will be in touch with the network even now, right? Uh, the 2013 batch that went before me, I'm still in touch with those firms. Uh, the 2014 batch, I just spoke to Gurbinder, a, a friend of mine, he's out of Mohali and, you know, I just asked him about how it's. So long story short, we are still in touch. Uh, we still reach out to each other for any uh, advice. We still reach out to reach, reach out to each other for any help we need. Uh, be it and it's it's you know more about so uh, Ramdas is a guy who was a CEO of a firm and he wanted to kind of set up the whole uh, performance management system and you know get his his company's culture right. And he reached out to me saying I've heard so many about Google's OKR systems and all that. Let's connect. He flew down to Hyderabad. We sat for a day. I spoke to him about the pros and the cons. And then he went and, you know, incorporated all of this. So these things, you know, it's not only uh, while you are working or while you want a job change, but also after that, your network will help you a lot. Probably you'll cover all industries between the 60 in your class or 65 in your class. And then if you count the alumni, uh, you'll probably cover even much more. So uh, 2014, uh, and I know a lot of people would say, okay, placements. I know a lot of people say, okay, curriculum, academics, professors. That is a, a different level itself. So you've worked for 11, 12 years, you know, you have certain pre certain ways of uh, thinking about finance, about strategy, about marketing. These professors will come and, you know, put a different spin to it, you know, and the professors are not arrogant. They won't say that I know better than you. you know, they would actually get the class to participate and kind of, talk, you know, shape their thinking also. So that kind of interactions also help me a lot. And I, I really like that. Thank you, Jignesh. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Samir, let me come to you next. We, uh, You, in fact, mentioned about the cohort that you had 20 plus CEOs in the cohort. Um, also, it's a very diverse cohort that the admission team very thoughtfully puts together. So uh, there are people from various walks of life, from different stages of their career journey. Uh, in fact, in your cohort, there is a doctor, there's a lawyer, there is there are people from defense, there are entrepreneurs. So it's a, it's a very diverse community that comes together. Now, Tell us a little about that cohort experience. How beneficial is this diverse cohort? And what are the possible takeaways from being part of such a cohort? I think, uh, like you rightly put, we had, uh, uh, you know, cohort members from different walks of life. Uh, uh, like you said, yes, there's a doctor and uh, he comes with a very different thought process because he was a doctor, uh, but he had to do a lot of procurement. Uh, from one of the leading hospitals of Hyderabad, Rainbow Hospital. So he used to ask us a lot of questions on, you know, how we take care of our business, how we take care of our vendors, uh, procurement, etc. Uh, even we had uh, people from the armed forces who wanted to move their careers, who wanted to hang their boots there and then, you know, get into the corporate life. And uh, I remember uh, speaking to one of those court members uh, uh, and then he joined Aether. He joined Aether Energy again because of his exposure and experience that he had. We were able to guide him that, you know, you should apply into these companies. You should apply into these roles, which are pretty suitable to you, etc. Uh, those are few of the cohort members that I was able to, uh, you know, put in value and help them. But similarly, I had a lot of help. Like I just mentioned uh, sometime back, 
uh, when I was setting up this organization, um, I, I took a lot of help from HR folks, finance folks who actually were able to help me because generally what happens is uh, when you are at the top, it's very, uh, you know, they say that um, it's difficult to, you know, share your feelings or share your emotions with people. But with the court members, it's like a family. So you can really reach out and then you say, okay, this is my problem and how do I solve it? Uh, I know one of the problems that I face uh, initially was how do you deal with consultants? You know, because consultants come and put in those jargons in front of your board saying that, you know, it is this. But being part of ISP, you learn all these jargons and it becomes much easier to understand what they're saying. Ask them the right questions so that the board also feels, yes, this guy knows, you know, his job well. So uh, dealing with different kinds of people, I think it really helped. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Samir. Uh, Anand, coming to you. Uh, now, you've been a champion of continuous learning. You've done a lot of non-degree programs with leading schools. You also have an MS degree from Pitts Learning, an executive leadership program from Columbia. So a lot of, uh, lot of times our participants ask, uh, you know, what is the ISB difference? What is the PGP Max difference? Have, have you seen a difference? Is there something that you can point to uh, having gone through the program? So, I mean, um, I presume you're asking what's the difference between an executive uh, education degree and an MBA, right? True. Um, ISB so, against the other schools, yes. Yeah. So that was what I was trying to do, right? I was trying to piece together different bits of knowledge and uh, try and become a bootstrap engineer. And four or five courses and I figured out that was the wrong way of doing it. Because one is uh, you can never find these courses in the time. You won't make a commitment because... You know, uh, it's hard and unless you are committed and you have the program and you know, you, you know, your mind is set on it, you know, um, so an MBA program, just to give you an example, right? The ISB program is 24 credits or 24 subjects across different pillars of what you need as a leader, finance, accounting, operations, marketing, strategy, um, lead, uh, personal people, I would say the people side, accounts, etc. It's going to be extremely hard for you to try and learn this in executive education programs because the edu executive education programs try and adopt it to an application knowledge, not the foundation knowledge. An MBA program, what I have realized, and I'm just speaking on a few courses which uh, I did versus what was in the MBA program, is it will give you the foundation plus the adaptation and the application for the question. So the program, the way the professors uh, teach you a course in an MBA program versus the same course delivered in an executive MBA program uh, is it going to be a difference. Okay. The second thing is you are strung together 24 credits or 24 different topics that all put together give you that umbrella of whatever is required to be at the helm of business. You trying to do those 24 programs through Udemy and other things. Um, is it possible? Yeah, it is going to be possible, but, um, you know, I've done five uh, of uh, the credits before I got into ISP, and I would say that um, the learning experience was different, and I could notice a definite, um, you know, um, difference between the executive education program, and the content was the same. I mean, the knowledge transpired was the day, the teaching methodology and the depth and the span and the wholesomeness is very uh, different. What is this probably most essential and people fail to understand is when you get to a structured MBA program, which is ranked against the MBAs like a Wharton MBA and other things, right? you've got professors um, who sit down together across the table in developing a program and no module is individually developed. So the professor in accounts comes up with his idea of what he wants to teach and what the content needs to be the professor of finance. Because accounts is looking at whatever is going in the finance world and the operations world in some sense. And, uh, you know, and it's just laying out the data. They sit down and connect the dots and you will see how it is done. And then the cases, right? I mean, when you do 24 credits, in a week of learning um, each of the modules, you will do about 8 to 10 cases. So you've got 24 times 8 to 10 or 250 cases. So when your uh, faculty and uh, course uh, team sits down and looks at the program and we have professors and I want to name some professors that we learned under Professor, professor Kale, Professor Suret Mansinger. Uh, professor Suret is 80 years old. He's still passionate about teaching. He still comes all the way from LA to teach finance for the executive MBA program because he says he learns a lot from talking to executives. And that's the kind of uh, thing. Right? And he will tell you, I'm teaching you this. And when... Uh, Professor Sri Sridharan is teaching you accounts. He will talk to you about this and you will you'll have to connect the dots. 
and you won't realize it until you sit in the next class of like two semesters later and you will see the connection and all that right so the 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 crafting of the course is very important in putting together an mba now um, and isb will create its own mba program it's the same subject but an ima the set of professors will craft the program no two programs will have the same cases but a lot of these cases get repeated i would say there are some versatile uh, seminal cases that teach you the foundations of an op research or strategy or something like that um when i say cases you will practically get uh, you know pre reading and you will have data to analyze like it's a real world situation as well so that's the difference between doing these loose udemy courses and all that for free and putting that on your resume versus doing a structured mba program um that's that's essentially what it is i'll also give you one other uh, fact right um, I'm, i'm also since the question came up on what do you find different i'm going to explain to you what is the difference between doing this list in a iim or one of these universities or doing this in the us and doing it guys we and just this is just my perspective this is just my knowledge that i want to say right iims were created by the government with an idea of leveraging the indian context to create management professionals for the indian industry so their emphasis is a little bit of india okay and they also bring some global perspective into their mba program now a wharton would have some cases in about india because india is an important emerging market in the global economics but they will be centered around doing european cases africa cases north america cases and all that in the portfolio because the student profile is very global when you go to a b school in the us or let's say you go to a b school um you know uh, in europe like oxford or, or something their their student profile is global and therefore the cases are uh, tailored now isps cases is the whole idea of bringing global um you know mba quality to indian programs is what isb is the difference the program is basically teaching you what an iim teaches but brings you the professors from the wartons and the uc berkeley and the harvards and the different uh, b schools in europe and in the us come down here and teach courses that have been constructed keeping in mind that the profile of students is going to be 95% indian we did have a few um, overseas students in our cohort but it's going to be essentially an indian cohort it will give you perspectives about india and it will give you perspectives about india so this is how you have to sit down and analyze what is it that you want do you want to go and work in the us you probably you are best fitted to go to a program in the us if you can best afford it your next best alternative is to do something like an isb which gives you an international and india perspective or if you're looking at an iim program and you go to speak to a couple of alumni from iim and isb hopefully this thing stands out and each of you have to make the choice saying what's best for me and you know and that's essentially you making the decision and these are some of the things that you will have to gather feedback on i know it's difficult not having done the program you have to rely on different people's inputs but you need to really understand what doing an mba is all about what are the questions you need to ask what are the questions i mean please don't ask people will i get a job transfer will i get what is the roi those are the wrong questions you need to really ask about what is the program concept around what is different in isb what you know tell me why you chose isb how did it come like if these questions that are being asked you need to ask more about learning about isb program rather than validating your bias or validating your fears and you need to seek information understand put it down connect the dots and understand why different programs are different and then make a decision excellent thank you and i'm for narrating that very well um let me stay with you for another important point that you just uh, brought up now there are a lot of case studies that you go through the academic rigor in the program is very high there are pre reads that you have to do there are preparatory content that you are expected to prepare and come on uh and you did the program when you were um, in fact in the middle of covid uh, you were also handling a very important function within ford you were handling smart manufacturing so or probably there were a lot of business priorities which came up how do you manage time for all of this how do you balance your professional life with your personal life and then take the academic rigor along what is your uh, take i mean advice for that 
So, in fact, I was traveling to the US in between the cohorts, and um, you know, I used to value the 16 hours of airplane time um, to do all my pre reads on the way back and way, you know, into the US and back. And I used to also be jet lagged, but it was just the commitment and the sheer willpower that you needed uh, to go through. I'll tell you one thing an NDA is not for the main part. If you're doing this for a tick in the box and putting it on your resume, you will be singled out even after doing your MBA and getting your program. If you are committing to an MBA program, you're going to have to make use of it. Okay? Um, you are going to have to find the time. You're going to have to um, understand. And you can you can sit down. I mean, cases are done in groups of four or five. There will be individual cases, there will be group cases. Now, I know of people who can sit down the fringes and uh, they don't want to do the case. I pity and sympathize them because they are the ones who are losing out instead of sitting down and having that discussion and sometimes you get into arguments and it's all in, in good spirit, right? Um, if, if you're not prepared to do that, if you're not prepared to go through that typical B-school experience of having to do a lot of reading in a small amount of time, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's not for you. I mean, uh, the program's not for you. Not this program, no program for you, right? So that is the essence. So is ISB any different? Does ISB make it more difficult? I don't think so. I mean, ISB program, in fact, is very well structured in my opinion, and that was one of my choices. I could not sacrifice a year to be on any campus to do this program. And I could ha I had to keep my job. So it was a conscious decision I made saying, I need to you know, do my routine job and I could take a week off every month because I had this agreement with my management. I had to go find the time. I mean, did my manager cut me any slack in my objectives during the time I did my MBA? No, not at all. Nobody, no my boss is going to do you that. Right? You're going to have to sit down with your wife and say, how are you going to share your domestic responsibilities? You're going to have to sit down with your friends and say, boss, don't expect me to come for that Friday evening beer and, uh, you know, chai or whatever that is that you're used to. You're going to have to make that sacrifice. And I'll tell you one thing. It is a safe sacrifice you, you do, whether you do a PGP program at the beginning of your career or a PGP max program. It takes a certain amount of effort to digest the amount of knowledge that is coming in. And if you don't set aside the time, you keep the distractions alive and you just do this as a tick in the box, you will not expect that. So my answer to that is, it is going to be strenuous. It is going to be, um, you know, it's like fitness. I don't know how many of you are fitness geeks. I mean, there is no fun in running for uh, one hour and sweating out. But there is a thrill after you do that, right? Your body feels active, your toxins and all that, and you feel very nice about this, right? Uh, it is exactly the same thing. You do that 15, 16 months of feeling, going through this burnout, but your life after that is very different. And it's for enjoying that you have to have the sacrifice. As simple as that. And make the commitment and go on. If you can't, MBA is not for you. Forget ISB, any MBA is not for you. Okay, that that really sets the uh, the expectation for a lot of our participants because yes, the program is rigorous and uh, here are our alums talking about how best to manage your time on this. Jignesh, let me come to you next. You were uh, part of uh, KPMG when you started the program in an advisory role. So uh, probably you had a lot of travel to do. Uh, it was a people-centric role. So you uh, probably were, uh, you were supposed to be present in a client site. And then you had to fly in on a Friday evening until the next Friday afternoon and pursue this program as well. Every 30 to 45 days, you had to plan for this commitment as well. How easy or difficult was it? What was, how did you manage it? Yeah, I think uh, in hindsight, it was definitely very difficult, but I must give credit to my, to KPMG, who were very, my partners, who were very kind of, uh, you know, supportive in doing this. Uh, the first thing that they did is, you know, they gave me all projects which are in India. Uh, so that one week I could have taken that break. Uh, uh, trust me, after finishing the cases, I was actually doing assignments, uh, you know, my, my project assignments also. So it was, I think 18 hours was like uh, the minimum I had to do, right? Uh, you, you had to find time. Uh, I remember so many times when my wife would say, let's go for a movie and I would know I have to finish this reading assignment. So uh, those 18 months are going to be very, very tough for you. Uh, all that, and, and you, you have a support system, not only as your friends and your family, but even, you know, colleagues, right? I remember so many times that 
I was based in Bombay that time, and you know the five of us would get together, divide the uh, the the material, and then you know kind of help each other out for two hours, you know, and we would meet at a at a, at a peer's house. So, uh, you know, these are the kind of uh, things that you do, and you, you kind of figure out how to deal with this. Uh, definitely, my my uh, uh, my my partners helped me a lot, and, uh, and and they knew, and we had discussed that you know this could possibly lead into me kind of moving out and doing something else, and they were completely okay with that. They wanted to set an example of continuous learning in the firm, and you know, doesn't matter if you're an associate director or a director, you keep learning. You know, many times in consulting firms you feel that okay, you know, why do I need to take an MBA? I'm already an MBA, and they wanted to kind of many were chartered accountants, and they want to get that continuous learning mindset within the firm, and uh, maybe I acted as as one of those uh, torchbearers for doing that. So they were very good on a personal front. As uh, Anand mentioned, it's not going to be a cake walk. Uh, if you want to make the best use of it, you can't be a spectator. You know, there were many times, I, I can tell you, there were many uh, times when a lot of our folks left the course mid that, that week midway because there was a work commitment that they had to get to. They couldn't finish that course. They had to come back the next year, you know, sit for that class and then kind of finish it. So uh, I know somebody who left the course midway, right? You know, he had his own environment consulting business and uh, uh, he left it midway. He couldn't do it. There was another a person from the the the... I think Air Force, who then came back again. So there were two, three cases who came back, two, three cases came back again next year. And I know in my batch, there was a guy from the previous batch. I think he's now the PBR CEO, CEO or CEO. He came back and he he finished it. So you'll see a lot of these cases. You'll have people, you'll have one or two people coming in. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. Like you've seen a lot of cases. I had an IFS person who did two classes and then quit the course. So uh, it will be tough. Uh, but as I said earlier, it will it will help you push your boundaries. Uh, you know, after 10, 12 years, you know, you kind of get into a, I would say comfort zone, but you get into a, a, a default mechanism, right? It will actually help you erase that default mechanism and you will find newer ways to kind of adapt. So that's how I did it. And credit, 50% credit to my family, uh, my network, and 50% to my employer, I would say, to, to kind of get me to this. Excellent. Thank you, Jignesh, for sharing that. And for our participants, that is another advantage of PGP Max. We do have something called leave of absence where you get to take a leave of absence for a week or for the rest of your course. And you get to do it with the uh, next batch. And that way, you decide on how best you manage PGP Max with the professional commitments that you would have. Some of you coming to you, uh, midway through the program, you were asked to set up this new business for, by Hyundai. So it is it was uh, really an entrepreneurial venture for Hyundai, uh, starting something that the company was not uh, in a space uh, of operating with. Now, that would have brought a lot of work on your table. That would have brought a lot of responsibility on your table. And then this rigor of uh, coming every 30, 45 days to attend the classes. And the classes are also not easy. Uh, there's a lot of pre-read and the faculties demand a lot. So how did you manage it? And what would, you, what would be your advice for prospective applicants? Yeah, Thomas. So even when I was with Toyota, I used to travel a lot. I used to travel at least two, three times in a week, uh, hectic travel. But then, yes, uh, I was able to manage my schedule and I was actually excited to go back to campus. So if you can manage your calendars well, uh, because you get your calendar well in advance, uh, you get it at least six months in advance from ISB. Uh, even if there is a change, they let you know at least a month uh, prior to you know making these changes. So I'm sure you can manage your schedule. But I think one thing that uh, came in very common from Anand or Jignesh, or you'll find it from my side is, uh, if you've made a commitment that you really want to grow in your life and you have an aspiration, then I'm sure you'll be able to manage your calendar. I think this is something which uh, sounds simple. It is difficult to do. But uh, if there is a commitment and, you know, at the end of the race, when you find yourself uh, standing at the podium, you get that satisfaction. So it is important. Yes, uh, you will miss out on a lot of uh, family uh, engagements. Uh, I remember uh, during the Wali, during the Shera, we had, you know, our assignments to be done. But I think uh, when I look back today, I think it was preparing us to become a CEO. Like uh, uh, on a lighter note, Thomas, today, uh, you know, was one of those days when I was off. Uh, I just came back from my travel and the ISB entire gang was actually catching up for some drinks. But then I had committed to you. So I said, no, I can't come, you know, even uh, for the get together. So I think it's more about your commitment of what you want to do. And uh, the satisfaction that you get at the end of the day is much higher than, you know, uh, leaving out on certain things. So I think it, it is manageable. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you, Samir. Let me stay with you for another input. Uh, so let's now talk a little about the USPs of PGP Pack. So one of the USPs is the, something called executive coaching. It is an extension of one of the first courses that you do, uh, leading people in organization. And midway through the program, you get access to this platform where you decide on what coaching you need and you have coaches from across the world. Now, being a senior executive, uh, you probably have had a lot of learning at work uh, through the mentors that you might have at work. Is an executive coaching really beneficial? Uh, what should prospective applicants know about it? Uh, if you're talking about the better up or you know, better which we have, it, yes, I think it, it's it's good to have a personal coach because what happens in a classroom is that you're sitting with another 50, 60 people. And then of course the professor is you know involved in teaching you a certain subject or you want to understand. You may get time, but very limited time. Uh, but then again, like I mentioned earlier, when you are at the top, you can't discuss a lot of things uh, you know, with your peers, you can't discuss it with your board, you can't discuss it with your team members. But I think here you have a coach, you have a mentor who you can really talk to very openly that this is the problem that I have and what is the kind of solution that, you know, or a perspective that you can look from uh, the coach. And uh, even the coach, uh, you have uh, multiple people available uh, from different backgrounds and you can select, you know, who you want to talk to. And uh, I remember... Uh, I think it's a very good point, uh, Thomas. I, I remember during the transition, actually, you know, when I got this offer from Hyundai and uh, I was very happy in Toyota, I was not sure whether I should take the plunge. No, because I was in the middle of the course. So I was not sure whether, I, you know, the, the next employer will allow me leaves uh, because I had to set up this organization. And I remember having this conversation with the mentor and the mentor actually guided me that why don't you speak to your employer in this way? show them the advantages of you, you know, going for the classes midway, etc. And uh, she really guided me because she was from the HR department in Tata Motors and she had great experience. So I, you know, actually chose to speak to her and she really guided me in this. So it helped me. Personally, it really helped me. And uh, I think it's very similar experience with my other uh, cohort members as well. Uh, when they had certain issues going on with their uh, careers, I think they also got uh, good help from uh, these uh, mentors. Thank you, Samir. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, in fact, for our participants, the executive coaching is something that was introduced uh, during the pandemic time in PGP Max, and it is today a flagship offering. Uh, there are multiple coaching modules which are available there, uh, be it from sleep coaching or diet coaching or voice coaching, all the way up to business-specific coaching. Uh, and there are people who uh, do as many coaching as possible. So that's an another offering that you should uh, be aware of. Jignesh, coming to you, uh, probably you did not have an exposure to executive coaching specifically, but I wanted to talk about the international immersions. Now, we do have a lot of global faculties coming and teaching in the program. So then how does an international immersion help? Uh, just going to another school, being in another setting, is that really beneficial? And what is what are some of the takeaways that you got from that? Uh, thanks for the question, Tony. So I remember we had done uh, two specific batches. One was with this FDC school in Brazil and uh, yeah, Brazil Modern in Kiron. Uh, and all of these were memorable. So I, when we went to Brazil, they were just, uh, you know, this was just before they were hosting the Olympics and I think the football World Cup. Uh, to my amazement, the professor who taught us there was in the center of, you know, planning the whole Olympics for them. So we got some amazing uh, ways to you know what that economy is all about. I remember another class in Brazil, which was all about philanthropy and, you know, how philanthropy works. And we all think, uh, at least I thought at that point in time, that philanthropy was all about, uh, you know, just giving a money away. But there is a profitability aspect to philanthropy. So, uh, price, pricing and management, uh, Jabmon, Raju and Morton, uh, pricing, uh, you know, in Kellogg, uh, some amazing stuff that we learned there. I, I remember one crisis management class we took uh, in Kellogg. And I didn't know that there is actually a checklist to the prices. So these are aspects that when we do more daily things, and I haven't checked my books. These these are all memories that are coming back to me. And I heard some of the names here. Uh, so so these are things that you know you don't even think of. I don't ever think we you know we ever think about how to deal with the crisis. I still remember there was a Disney uh, a case study that happened on dealing crisis uh, when. Um, Anand was talk, talking about case studies. I remember I had done a Google case study uh, there, there. There was a guy called Prasad Chetty. He's a manager in Portland. And I actually met him when I traveled uh, to the US. So uh, that was a kind of fine boy moment for me. 
But my point is, there are like pricing management. You know, unless there are some people in marketing or branch of marketing that do pricing, you will never. I will never learn uh, how you know you actually price things. So the international emotion actually helped me in, in many of these aspects that I typically wouldn't concern, uh, wouldn't uh, you know know about. Uh, to Sameer's point, uh, you know, we didn't have coaching, but I remember reaching out to Professor Prasad Kaipa. Like his class was eye opening. Uh, and we reached out to him whenever he came after that to the campus. I always kind of took 30 minutes to meet him and kind of discuss things with him. So uh, it's great to have that perspective. And, you know, they don't give you answers, but they give you directions. And they ask you those leading questions that kind of drive you to those answers. So, uh, again, Professor Prasad Kaipa is, is definitely, uh, I remember Ms. Ms. Professor Srinu Srinivasan's class on, uh, uh, I forgot that topic there. It was around pricing again. So. Uh, you know, that exposure is is great and uh, you'll get to learn about, you know, how, when we went to Brazil, we learned about the Brazilian culture for that matter. You know, there was a class on how the cultural things happen. Uh, it was fascinating to learn. So that's why I say, you know, I keep on repeating that, you know, it opens your perspective and the international emotion definitely opens your perspective to how to be in different situations. Thank you, Jignesh. Thank you for that. And uh, Anand, let me come to you next. Uh, shed some light on the faculties who teach in the program. Uh, in fact, uh, we do have a uh, we, we have a combination of faculties. So we have faculties from within ISB. We have faculties who travel down from global schools. We also have faculties who have credible years of research in the academia side. We also have practice professors who who were probably CEOs earlier who are coming in today and teaching in the program. Uh, so, how does this combination help? Is is there a good takeaway that you can cite back to this combination being put together for PGP Max? So, I'll, uh, I mean, I remember every professor um, from Module 1 to Module 24. I mean, uh, if there is one thing that I have to be very proud of is that I learned from some of the best professors. Uh, it is true. Um, see, I'll uh, just, I mean, um, I'm going to name a few of my teachers. It's very hard to select uh, some because all of them have given me so much and it's precious. Professor Surain um, was 77 when he traveled uh, 22 hours on a plane, came here, taught us the basics of finance. And I probably have seen about 200 professors in my life, but Professor Surain will stand out for his uniqueness in the way where he drills the concept. And what is the difference between ROI, ROCE, ROE, uh, and everything, and you know all the basics that you need to do in finance? You will never forget to do that. And he'll drill it in such a fantastic way. Right? And that will be followed up by a uh, professor from Harvard, um, Professor Smith, Smithy, uh, Smith, Sprini, um, you know, and she's a practitioner about finance strategy, one of the best professors. They work together as you know, uh, as a team, as a pair. I mean, one teaches the foundation and the other teaches the application. You want, you will find that combination amazing. We have that Professor Nandu Nand Kishu. Um, he is one of my uh, favorite professors. Uh, I have had the good opportunity to, he is a CEO for Nestle. He, he, he had an international career um, in uh, Nestle. And I'll tell you this, you give any career post credit to Professor Nandu to teach, he will teach you that. It is not that uh, it is, is, is it's not that he has done his research. He is not a conventional professor, but he's a practitioner, right? He will give you a CEO perspective. He was the CEO of Nestle Global, sitting somewhere in Switzerland. Decided to you know wrap up his career early and come and teach in a school where he can create impact and value. He's teaching you. He runs a lot of modules on how do you achieve your career goals, how do you deal with stress, how do you, you know, break the glass ceiling and uh, you can Google Professor Nandu, uh, Nand Kishore of ISP and he, he, outside of his teaching work at ISP, you know, he, he disseminates his knowledge through his YouTube videos. So I've had the good opportunity to write to him on some of my personal and situations and get his help. Professor Saumya, um, who is, teaches at negotiation, um, I mean, I worked in a purchasing function. I had done billion dollar uh, deal negotiations prior to going into the class. But, you know, and I told Professor Saumia this and I said, uh, is, I mean, look, I'm not trying to minimize the importance of the course, but I, I might be coming in with the bias. And she was brilliant in handling me through the course and giving me very difficult assignments and specific roles that I had not done, um, you know, um, which, which was, and even today, 
when i have to do some very critical negotiations i write to professor soumya she is able to give me 5 10 15 minutes we have a quick discussion i take some inputs it's fantastic um you know so this spectrum of professors the dean the former dean um you know he is the most cited professor in the world his his research and uh, his uh, publications are the most cited of any professors in the world so just look at this i mean i've uh, spoken to you about five or six professors each one is unique all of them don't come with the same i've done 25 years of teaching i've done 25 research papers each one is very unique in that sense that's the first aspect right the second aspect you must understand each b school a wartons different to a harvard okay and i don't know if you uh, what is this website um uh, quant poets and quants right um harvard is a poetic school which is basically te teaching you through case study uh, uh, wharton is a quant school which teaches you the uh, you know how do you derive uh, from a situation create the foundations and you know go from there so you got teachers coming from what you got teachers coming from um, kellogg you got teachers coming from ucla berkeley you got the professors coming from these different backgrounds and think about the assortment so you are getting to learn a bit of each of these different schools and their style of teaching and they will tell you how to do it i mean our economics uh, professor was uh, i mean i immediately um, i'm slightly bad with names but he was he has written some 40 books at wharton i mean he is the head of research in wharton and we had a hard time keeping up pace with him but you know that's the variety of professors that will come to a pgp max program um you know each one coming from a different school different teaching philosophy but they all string together they string together the courses are selected you know the accounts courses are selected for with a certain schools in mind the strategy courses all come from harvard because the poetic side is more important the operations course has come from bar wharton because these are the quantitative side so it's cherry picking the best professors available into a program which even if you do this 24 times in 24 ivy league schools <laughs> that's what you're getting in uh, in a package when you go to isp the uniqueness and combination so it, it is indeed one of the plus points it is one of the plus points i was told this by an alumni i I was very thankful to two of the alumni who had given me the specific inputs when I did my research, and therefore I want to mention this, and I'm glad you asked me this question, Thomas. Is the variety and assortment of professors that you have at ISB? It's a unique selling point. The perspectives you gain from listening to these teachers and having the connections and following them in their professional. Uh, I mean, once you become a teacher, you. you know it's 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 a social work i would say i mean they have this habit of disseminating their knowledge publicly for free and other things and uh, it's great excellent thank you so much for sharing that and in fact i've got a lot of questions with uh, you know numbers and profiles attached so people are asking um, you know i've got 12 years of experience is this is the right time to do the program i've got 15 years 20 years 25 years is this the right time to do the program somebody with 30 years of experience is, is am i too late to do the program uh, and also similar questions with profiles i'm a senior manager is now the right time to do the program or the director is now the right time to do the program all of these are the questions now all three of you did the program at different stages in your career and this different stages of your life uh, i'd like to take all three of your perspectives on this when is the right time to do the pgp max at isp sunil let me start with you Okay, so something common that I saw in the entire cohort, uh, they were people with ten, twelve years of experience, fifteen years of experience, twenty years of experience, some were twenty-five years of experience. But one thing which was very common between all of us was that we were eager to learn, and I think that is the kind of cohort that you will get because when you are eager to learn, that means you are eager to grow in life. So I think the average that you see in the cohort will be fifteen years. but if you think you are ready to take up a higher responsibility you want to move up the ladder from a departmental leader to an organizational leader then i then i think it's the right time to move up or do this course excellent that that is validation jignesh uh, what would your perspective be when is it the right time to do pgp max i think then i heard anand say that also that you know he feels like that he's got one so i feel it the time is yesterday uh the world is changing so rapidly uh you know i mean every 6 months i uh, you know we see change i am in the center of one with ai and all that so 
the the time is uh, always right and i think the time is right when you make up your mind and you know you can commit to it uh, if you have any uh, situation you can't commit to it then you won't get the best out of it so a keep an open mind and we commit to it if these two things are there i think the time is right uh, anand what would your take be so again as i say uh, i mean i'm just going to repeat what i said um, you know the career trajectory of those who've done an mba from a good peace school has always been you can have a very good population it has always been on the upward uh, right so keep keeping that in mind it's a very personal question now, there's no singular answer for it it depends on each individual's work situation the plan from where is he trying to go to where does he want to go so you have to fit this whole thing don't do an mba because three of your colleagues did an mba and you too want to do an mba unless you're able to answer the question why is it necessary for me what incremental value do i derive doing an mba you know where should i do my mba to derive the value if you don't have the clear answers don't go sign up because it's a lot of money lot of time commitment and don't waste somebody else's opportunity to learn. i will be as simple and straightforward in telling you this now is it a right time um, sooner rather than later I, that's all i would say but uh, you know the pgp max program is designed assuming you bring a certain amount of industry knowledge the program is compact for a specific reason because your ability to absorb the concepts are different to someone who does a pgp program so i have not done the pgp but i presume you know there's a lot more drilling down of the concepts in the pgp program that's taken for granted in the max you will have some drill down of the basics but you will run through it much faster assuming that given your experience you're able to absorb it right so um, that that is the only thing that you will have to keep in mind and there are different programs there's a pro there's a max for different years of experience and each has been curated for um, you know a specific need a specific year of experience and a specific type of learning process where if you are able to commit only saturday sundays the pro program may be more useful but if you want to do a max program you are able to commit the time a max program is more relevant even as an executive mba i think you have to make the choice it's a very personal question um, but the answer is sooner the later but answer these why what where should i do it from and be very clear before you take the plunge i was just uh, one yeah. part so in fact when i wanted to get into the course i felt that the saturday sunday course was much better and i actually opted for pro but then later when i spoke to the admissions team they said no actually you fit into the pgp max and then they actually helped me to you know guide me to take the right course so i think the admissions team will also help the aspirants to uh, choose the course that that's right the one easy fix there is we do a profile evaluation so i've just shared a link in the chat box to book a profile evaluation as well just in case if you want uh, your profile to be assessed to figure out what is the best program or best path ahead that is your option to do so um another question that i'm getting is from uh, incoming participants and uh, you know people who are going to start the program in the next few uh, couple of months away from now uh, so the question is how should one prepare for pgp max uh, now that they are ready for this journey what are some of the preparatory uh, materials that they should have in their to do list uh, let me take your perspectives jignesh let me get yours first i think as i mentioned now that you said take the plunge i think make the most out of it uh i remember seeing a lot of uh, folks who were uh, you know uh, while they were very very good at kind of you know following the academics but they were not very participative they were not very uh, you know uh, sharing their experiences and learning from others so i think do everything possible uh, that 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 course offers you know equally good in academics talk to people share your experiences uh, uh you know provide enough time do the pre reads well so there are these small small things that you do and at the larger uh, phase you know uh, be uh, like you know when there are case studies when there are exams you know those kind of things there, there'll be a mix of people like we had a mix of people in our batches they didn't care too much about exams but you know it's a good way to kind of understand what you absorb how well you've done there was a, a cohort that was always trying to kind of compete and be first in class right so you will have your own kind of uh, objective that you, you you want to get out of it take a couple of classes to uh, understand you know what will you gain out of it and then try to uh, you know make the most out of it by giving enough time and and uh, you know committing yourself to it so uh, that's what i would say uh, but keep an open mind i keep repeating that because when i went in i had a very very 
narrow uh, bent of mind about what I want from the course. You know, I'll, I'll study hard. You know, I'll do all the cases. You know, I'll give the exams and all that. And by the time I reached midway through, you know, that changed. So I was like, why did I waste six semesters or eight semesters to kind of reach there? I should have done it. Early. I would say uh, go in with an open mind, commit fully, and uh, and create the the necessary time to. to so, uh, Samir, let me ask another question to you. This is uh, from. Can I, uh, uh, can uh, I just add? Uh, yes, yes, Anand, please, please, please. So, I will say there are two essential preparations you need to do. Take a holiday with your family because if you've taken the decision to do it, it's <laughs> going to be 16, 15 months of a lot of studies and you're not going to be able to find the time. Okay. So, please do that for your families. Go spend some time out, relax, ease your mind. Don't stress about it. The course has been very carefully dug. I mean, you've got a preparatory module from HPAX that will be sent to you. A month before it will be the foundation you will learn all that and i presume that still continues right the second most important is speak to people who have leveraged their mba and become successful and say what did you do differently at b school other than go give your attendance and, come back? and prepare your mindset to immerse yourself. how do i use a group workout how do i use my evenings in isb to go around sit in the library which section of the library is fantastic you know what do I do during the 15 months? How do I network with the professors? How do I understand what research is going on in the university? What do I understand about all the programs that are going on in the university? Prepare yourself to extract the most out of the program. Don't sit down and say, do I have to read this textbook, that textbook? That is not needed. These are the two essential preparations I will tell you you must do. One, clear your mind and B, understand what you need to do to absorb and you know get the most out of it. Excellent. And then the uh, follow-up question to you uh, on that. Um, another question is, uh, how are exams conducted in PGP Max? Will it be hard to do these exams because some, somebody is in the industry for about 15, 20 years, uh, and then when you come back there, how are the assessments going to happen? And is it easy or tough to do it? Okay. Um, I, I'm going to direct you to, um, you know, uh, this it was very funny writing an exam after 20 years of uh, graduating. But, you know, one of my friends, colleagues, um, he was a professor at IAM Bangalore, and I, I hope you don't have this problem with me saying that his name is An Professor Anshuman Tripathi. He passed away a week and a half ago. And he tells you something about exams in the marks. And uh, he's a close friend of mine. It's not the marks that is important. It's the knowledge that you take and the value that you create in the industry is the satisfaction that you get out of people. No matter what you do, which school you do, don't think you've scaled Mount Everest because you've got the Dean's List Award and you go out and do nothing, it's of zero value. So exams are an essential part of the curriculum to test if you've understood but it's not the end all mean all for the learning courses. It's what you absorb, how you absorb. It's not the marks that are important. Don't stress about it. You'll get a question paper. There will be an invigilator. You're not allowed to copy. All those rules that apply to you in your school and college exams apply to the exams here, but it's an essential part of the learning courses. But I would, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably deviating course, but it's it's a professor. He committed himself to the whole course of teaching. He was um, regarded as one of the best professors in IA in Bangalore. But listen to what he says about what is the value of marks in the B school. Thanks, thanks, Sanit, for that. Uh, Samir, I'm diverting another question to you. Uh, so there is a question. In fact, there are a couple of questions. I'm putting it together. How do you sustain? the network that you create at ISB, both with professors and with the ISB community, what is the best way to do that is a question. Okay, so uh, I think it's important to keep in touch with the network. Uh, there are a lot of events also that ISB um, uh, curates together. In fact, uh, just before the session started, me and Anand were speaking about uh, the PGP Max, uh, uh, the, the, the session which is happening, the networking session which is happening next week in Goa, where all the PGP Max alums of all those last 10, 12 years are catching up. So next week, uh, we get to meet there. Uh, even in our cities, we have our own PGP Max alum groups. Uh, so I have actually moved from Bangalore when I was in Toyota. So I moved to Delhi. So I am part of the Bangalore group. I'm also part of the Delhi group. 
Also, it happens that, you know, when I'm going to Bombay, I just kind of catch up with one of my friends and they put it in the group and we get to catch up uh, in the Bombay circle as well. So there are circles, there are WhatsApp groups available. And of course, people are always available for you to uh, touch base and catch up. Uh, I was also part of the SEAL, uh, which is also student engagement. So for our cohort, uh, I was part of the SEAL team. We were three members who were part of the SEAL team. So it's our actually responsibility to keep the cohort together. So whenever there are any events happening or even uh, during you know, weekends, we try to catch up for breakfast with families, sometimes with families, with kids. So the network is actually very important and uh, there are a lot of events happening across cohorts and across uh, our cities. Thank you. Thank you, Sameer, for that. And uh, being mindful of time, I'll drive in one last question to all three of our panelists. Now, from an admissions point of view, we keep saying that PGP Max is a 15-month transformational journey. Now, ha having said that, what is what has been transformation for you? How would you define your transformation? Jignesh, let me start with you on this. Uh, how would you define your transformation from the PGP Max journey? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing that I took away is, you know, I, having been in the same industry before the course, I had a very set pattern of approaching a problem to situation. Very analytical in my uh, nature, we only look at one or two aspects and then quickly derive the answer. So that's how I was professionally tuned to and in uh, curriculum wise, academics wise. I think after this, I realized that there are various aspects I need to kind of uh, look at and my decision making changed uh, quite a bit, right? And now over the years, it has become a default of kind of considering uh, those many aspects that I don't, you know, there is a human aspect to everything, there is a equity aspect to everything. Uh, the the decision can't be a win lose. It has to be a win win. And what's the best way to have everything? Uh, who wins first? Who wins next? Uh, so all those things, uh, you know, is what. So if I have to put it in a you know in a short line, it is my default way of operating, which has uh, kind of changed after the course. And, uh, I think I have been more holistic, uh, you know, thought leader. In the world. Thank you, Jignesh. Uh, Samir, let me get your perspective next. Uh, what has been your takeaway from the program? What is transformation for you from PGP Max? Uh, there are multiple things, but uh, just to name a few, I think first is uh, the kind of confidence that you get when you have a brand like ISB on your CV or on your LinkedIn. Uh, the way people perceive you is very different. So because I was in a similar role in Toyota, except for your senior vice president or CEO, but the way people look at you or when they talk to you, because they feel that, you know, you are from ISB, you get a lot of respect. Uh, they know that uh, they're not just talking to someone. They're talking to someone who actually knows a lot. That is one. Two, uh, the way you think because of the journey that you had in 15 months, the perspectives that you got from different industry leaders, uh, the way you think and your problem solving uh, is much different than what I had uh, before. And uh, of course, like I said, the network is what you get with you. Thank you, Samir. Anand, how would you define it? What is transformation in your words? Anand, you are on mute. I was going to say something about it, but Samir stole that. And now I was left for 30 seconds. So I'm going to give a new answer. This is what ISD prepares you for, right? You're able to tackle any situation with no time and the pressure to be with it. So what ISB will do with you is drill in new methodologies, frameworks to think through any amorphous war problem, dissect it, be it strategy, be it finance, be it that you are put on the spot, you're risk managing or whatever it might be, any kind of situation in the business, it will impart the essential skills, tools, methodologies in your repertoire that you're able to apply. Somebody just did that to me and I had to bail myself out. Thanks ISB for that. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks a lot. A lot of thank yous pouring in through our QA box and through the chat box. Thanks a lot uh, for taking the time. To our panelists, uh, a lot of our participants, as I mentioned, are in the process of evaluating the program and are in the process of applying for the program. So, what you just narrated, what you just laid out to them, is going to help them with a lot of clarity as they apply for PGP Max. And thanks a lot for taking the time, especially on a Saturday evening, for this. Uh, for our participants, thanks a lot for joining us on a Saturday evening. You could have been anywhere you chose to be here with us. Thanks, Thank you so much for taking the time. Wishing you an amazing weekend ahead. Thank you. Uh, 
have a very nice time. And I've shared the link for the one-to-one -one conversation in the chat box. Feel free to reach out to us if you need any help from Arvind. Thanks a lot. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anand, Jignesh, Thomas. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Thomas, you want us to leave or hang yeah, on? Yeah, you can leave. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you so much. Bye.